Hey, John Tai here, and welcome to the self public. I'll start that again. John Tai here, and welcome to the Self Publishing Summit. Very excited to bring a great guest to you today. Uh, he helps position. He helps people position themselves as leaders in the market, charge more for what they do, and make connections with amazing people. And he's going to talk to us today about cracking the celebrity code. He's very, very well qualified to do that. He's a three-time Emmy award-winning director, producer, and filmmaker. He's also an expert in personal branding, media, marketing, and PR, and is known as a top agent or the top agent to celebrity expert, experts around the world. And uh, he's also co-authored 34 best-selling books, including the Wall Street Journal bestseller, Story Selling. Our guest today, Nick Nanton. Nick, welcome to the Self-Publishing Summit. Thanks for having me, John. I'm excited to be here, and uh, hopefully we'll get some knowledge out so everyone can can have better lives, right? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, I have no doubt about that. That bio I gave, by the way, was a very brief <laughs> version of Nick's bio. He's got tons of media appearances, all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, as I say, he's fantastically qualified to be talking about this. So. Um, Nick, let's kick things off by, you know, I know you do a lot of things with, with your clients, but perhaps give us an overview of the kind of things you do to help clients within your business. And then we can sort of niche down, as it were, from there and, and talk about the uh, celebrity, cracking the celebrity code uh, a little bit later in the interview. Sure. I mean, what we really do is we help people position themselves as the top in their industry, uh, whether and their marketplace, whether the marketplace is the globe or a street corner. Of course, mm -hmm. there's, you know, different budgets, different tactics for a street corner versus the entire world. But that's really what we do. We help people become positioned as the best known in their industry, in their marketplace. So that's the, the, the core of kind of the promise we make. And then we do that through obviously tactics. We help, we've helped over a thousand people become best selling authors and have co authored books. Uh, our clients have co-authored books uh, alongside Jack Canfield and Brian Tracy and Steve Forbes mm. and it goes on and on. Uh, and then we we get them on TV. We don't do it like a traditional PR firm might do where uh, they they try to get people and pitch them on shows. We have our own shows, so we just we mm -hmm. have clients who want to do that and we approve for that. We just put them on our own shows and we air on NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox affiliates across the country and CNN and Fox News and uh, a bunch of major stations coast to coast. So we do that for them. Then we also get them in major newspapers, magazines. Uh, we can get them in blogs and Huffington Post, all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, we do, we do kind of guaranteed media and PR with a focus on the fact that uh, marketing is what drives revenue. We, we really teach we teach how to uh, bring all three of those things together, media, marketing, and PR, to actually you know, move the needle in your business. Mm, okay, so good. A lot of stuff, yeah, a lot of stuff for us to get into there. So um, just to, again, by way of kind of overview, uh, talk to us about, um, well, really two things, celebrity branding and you know, being a celebrity expert. Those are two, two things that you do with people. So you know, explain what that is and then, you know, explain why that's important for people. Sure. I mean, the term celebrity is, is, can be polarizing for sure. And, and we just use it as a, you know, uh, everyone understands the, the pop culture term of a celebrity, just something that everybody knows. And so, you know, becoming yeah. a celebrity expert is just becoming the, the best known person in the industry and celebrity branding or being celebrity branded is just being branded as the best known. And, and I, I really try to break branding down in a very simple way. Most people try to make it really confusing. People will charge you <laughs> thousands of dollars to give you these really crazy definitions. And all it really is is storytelling. I mean, that's simply mm. all branding is a storytelling. And the more effectively you tell that story, the more you can help other people and the more you can get paid and do the things you want to do to change the world. So being a celebrity expert is really just becoming that best known best qualified person in the marketplace to help your prospect. Now, that doesn't mean the, typically that doesn't mean the masses, right? So, I mean, I'm not saying you need to be as well known as Kim Kardashian, right? I mean, uh, most of my clients yeah. wouldn't care and, and my neighbor doesn't know who I am, right? So that's okay or what I do. And so it, it, I, Celebrity Brain is all about niching down, finding the audience that actually could use what you have to offer and then mm. uh, and then making yourself the celebrity to those people. So, I mean, in a lot of cases, there's a lot of businesses that would do really, really well if the the 
founder, the CEO, the whoever the spokesperson is, was just really well known to a hundred people. I mean, if you're mm. if your marketplace is the Fortune 100, there's really probably only a hundred people inside those organizations, and you know who you are. So it doesn't have to be. And I, I want to make sure that people understand that you're not. This is not about ego. It's not about uh, being famous. It's about being uh, well known and well respected in the in the market that you're trying to dominate. Yeah, and um, thanks for making that point. I think that's really, really important because, yeah, we we do think of celebrities, you know, in the, in the sort of wider world as you know the Kim Kardashians or you know the Tiger Woods or whoever it might be, the the, the really big names in entertainment, in sport, whatever it may be. But in the the business context, it's it's being a celebrity, being a leader in your marketplace, in your niche, whatever that may be. And as you say, if you know if you've got, I, and I suppose this is an argument also for providing a higher end service or product as opposed to selling something for sort of widgets for or, or, or really cheap stuff for like seven dollars a pop you you charge you know a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for something you don't need like you say you, you only need a handful of people to have a very good successful lifestyle business or if you want to go beyond that and start building six uh, multiple seven figure businesses whatever it is um, it's it's a lot easier to do and uh, so I think that's a it's a really good uh, a good point there. Yeah, I think um, uh, the first person who taught me that really was Dan Kennedy. I'm sure you're familiar with mm, Dan. And, and, yeah. and Dan really kind of broke it down to like this million dollar formula. If you want to make a million dollars, then, and, and you could do this for a hundred thousand. I mean, take your number, but a million is typically the number people talk about. So a yeah. million dollars, okay, so you need 10 people to pay you a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred people to pay you ten thousand dollars or you know a million people to pay you one dollar yeah i mean you can break that formula down a bunch of different ways but it's typically not nearly as difficult as you would tend to make it out to be you know um mm. and and so once you start breaking that down you'll you'll see that and and i have found certainly in my career i know there's people who are great at selling low dollar widgets and making it up in volume but if you understand what I call the value equation, so when I first started doing what I was doing, um, we sold a, a $24,000 program from the stage, mostly kind of a guaranteed media marketing and PR program. And people were very skeptical, like uh, seminar promoters. Hey, Nick, I know who you are. I like what you do, but my audience is not going to spend $24,000. And I would say, well, what do you mean? They're like, there's just no way they're ever going to do it. I said, well, let, let's back this up. Um, Price is only an issue when value is a mystery, right? So if mm. I could tell you, if I could tell everyone in your in your audience, and, and this is a silly example, but if I could tell everyone in the audience that they gave me twenty four thousand dollars, I guarantee them a hundred thousand back. You're still telling me no one there would spend twenty four thousand dollars? Oh well, yeah, no, no. I mean that's that's a ridiculous example. But of course, if they could quadruple their money, and say okay, well I can't make them that guarantee, but if I can show them the value of what they're getting is over 50,000, 75,000, 100,000, it has the ability to help them double or triple or quadruple their business. I mean, you don't think some people there would find the $24,000 to do it. And they, they said, well, maybe. I said, well, what if I did this way? What if I sold it for $1,997 a month? So now if I'm giving you guaranteed media and PR that would normally cost you eight to $10,000 a month. And I was doing it for less than 2,000 a month. And it was a $24,000 program, but they didn't have to give me all the money today. They just had to give me the money in increments over the next 12 months. Like, oh yeah, that could work. So it was really just taking it and breaking it down to that value equation based on the fact mm. that if you can provide value to people, the price doesn't matter if, if that's the value they need. And, and obviously there's different types of values. I mean, you know, when I go to dinner at night, there's a value in feeling satisfied and having a great meal, but I'm probably not going to spend 10 grand on it. But if there's a value proposition, you know, I joined a board of a nonprofit recently and we committed uh, just under seven figures to that nonprofit over the next five years. And that's, uh, that's crazy money. I never, mm -hmm. it was, I sweated when I was making the commitment, but you know, it was <laughs> the, the fact that I thought that the value that I could, you know, I did it my business partner and I did together, we thought that we could provide, that it was a cool thing to get involved with, but we also know that we couldn't make those kind of commitments if there wasn't uh, some expectation that we would have that within that network of that nonprofit of, you know, wealthy people that there wouldn't be some business to be had. So, you know, it's, but as a value equation, I was willing to commit to the biggest commitment of my life, you know, outside of a, a house or, you know, whatever that, you know, just under seven figures in order to, because of the value exchange that I thought it would provide. Yeah. And again, really good point is, you know, if you're not already providing, if you're listening to this and you're just thinking about what to provide or you're starting a business or you're growing the business, really get thinking about what it is you can be providing and, and how you can communicate that value to people. Because 
I don't know, Nick, I, I often see people selling off the back foot and uh, sort of being afraid to to really, you know, drive home what it is it, without. And I don't mean this in a salesy kind of way. I mean this in a in a having a confidence and a belief in the value of what you are offering people yeah. and making sure that it's really good stuff. I mean, that's a, obviously a prerequisite, but uh, I, I think that's really, really important for anybody who's trying to grow a business. Absolutely. And, I mean, and you're not going to be able to command the, the same price on day one as you are in on day one of year 10, or if you do, you're doing something wrong. I mean, you know, we get, uh, I get $15,000 a day now and for consulting or when I'm out, uh, that's my directing fee when I'm directing documentaries or commercials, or whatever clients. And, and the only reason they're willing to pay that is because, you know, I have built, um, I've built a trail of value where people know what what it must, it must be expensive for a day because you can buy my books, you can join my mastermind, you can come to one of my two day programs in a group and in the group of two days, it's 7,500. So, I mean, it must be more for the, for the one day one-on-one. -on -one. Well, of course it is, but they wouldn't pay that if I wasn't able to return in multiples on that. But there's no way I would have had confidence I could deliver a multiple of 15,000 for a day. Or that people would have had, excuse me, the confidence in me to allow me to do that, mm. had it not been for you know the the confidence and the and the work product you create over the years that that points to the fact that that's okay. This is there's a case for this. This is a reasonable expectation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you you got to build, and uh, the the confidence comes with that, and and the yeah. and again the recognition and all. It's it, so if you're starting out, you know. The, I say this over and over again, but uh, there is no better time to start doing it than right now. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite uh, thing. So I, I speak at a lot of universities and places all the time, and and they all say, you know, what's your best piece of advice? And so, well, you know, I don't know if my best piece of advice, but what I think is the best advice I could give you would be whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, start doing it today. Because if not, you're you're getting a degree, which is great. I mean, I got an undergrad degree. I have a law degree. I've spent plenty of time in school, but I had businesses all the way through since high school, all the way through those. Because if you don't, you're, you're four years, seven years, eight years behind when you get out. Because the world doesn't change the day you graduate and get a diploma. I mean, it's a necessary thing. You should get one. I totally advocate school. But the point being, the moment you get that diploma, the world doesn't view you differently. And if you didn't take the time to learn the skill sets that everyone in the working world or an entrepreneurial world expects you to have, I mean, you just wasted four or five years of experience you could be getting. And, you know, the cool thing about university or school, I mean, typically either your parents are paying for it or, your, or you have scholarships or you have student loans, but you have the most unrealistic financial ex living expectations you're ever going to have. So like, yeah. why not take advantage of that and do some failing fast so you learn what doesn't work. I mean, I got $160,000 in student loans going to law school and undergrad, and I would say probably seventy-five dollars to $80,000. I'm not advocating to do this. I borrowed extra money to try things, and plenty of them mm. failed. But had I not done that, I had access to money, I might as well try things then. Well, all right. I mean, had I not done that, I would be, I'd probably be a decade behind where I am now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, you know, like you, I did undergrad, uh, postgrad, went to law school, uh, spent uh, part of my life as a corporate lawyer before I did this. I, I you know, I wish I had thought to uh, to to do some of that business stuff and trying and failing things whilst I was studying. I left it a little bit later, but great advice, you know, for your publishing career and for your business career as well. Fantastic advice. And I, I want to ask you a question about the um, the celebrity branding. In terms of, obviously we know it's important, but could you give us, uh, perhaps illustrate that with a, a story of somebody uh, that, that you've helped, but perhaps give us an example so we can make it tangible in terms of the, the before and after uh, of, of the difference that that's made to somebody. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm trying to think. The hard part is you know, we have 2,800 <laughs> clients. Um, so, you know, you get the stories all the time. Um, well, you know, let me, this is funny. I, I certainly wasn't planning this, but I got an email from a guy the other day that um, it was one of the nicer emails I've gotten. I mean, I'm not going to say I get them like this every day, so don't think that. But he told me it was okay to use his testimonial, but here, listen to this one. So he said, good afternoon, Nick. Uh, good afternoon, Nick. My name is Bruce. Although we have never formally shook hands or met in person, you have changed my life completely. I heard you speak last year in September 2014 at the local FLA GGL conference at the Rose and Shingle Creek in Orlando. This is for SBA lenders. Perhaps you might remember. 
Uh, so that's government lenders. I spoke at this government mm -hmm. lending conference. He said, when I heard you speak, I was working with a local lender making SBA loans. After hearing you speak, I was so motivated and moved that I downloaded your book and implemented so many of the suggestions you made to brand myself that I've done uh, that I have done. And literally six months later, nothing is the same in my business life. You influenced me beyond any other. And I wanted you to know this in the past six months, I got a new job with a huge pay increase, have branded myself, have made more commissions than I ever dreamed about doing more business than ever. And have watched my personal growth accelerate. So thank you to you, Nick. You never know who you might influence. So keep doing what you do. Clearly you're the best ever Bruce, right? So, I mean, that's <laughs> just an off Very the cuff. Cool. Um, you know, from a guy who I didn't even really coach, he just read my book and, you know, we're talking about publishing. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I, I gave Jack Canfield one of the first ever Lifetime Achievement Awards from the National Academy of Bestselling Authors and one of the most in influential things that Jack said in, in his speech was, you know, keep writing. You never know who you're going to touch. And of course, I mean, Jack, his book is in print, just chicken soups for the soul books. There's 600 million of those in print. I mean, that's just yeah. like, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, there's one for yeah. every family on earth practically. So it's like... <laughs> I That's mean, true, yeah. so he must, I mean, the stories he must hear must be ridiculous. But I mean, my book has had a modicum of success. I mean, we've sold some, I don't even know how many copies, some thousands or tens of thousands. I don't even know. But, you know, when you, when you get the chance to do that for one person, just because of the, the fact that you took the time to stop and and make note of what you are doing and, 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 and not only that, but you had the confidence to share it. And then you, and mm -hmm. you literally, and you got it off of your computer and put it in a book and put it out in the marketplace. You know, I, I got people on the internet that uh, like, I'm sure I haven't been to Amazon in a while trying to read the reviews, but I'm sure there's someone on there who says this is the worst book. Oh yeah. I remember there was one. It, it says like it accused the book of being uh, beyond the scope of this book. They said that me and my business partner continually said things were beyond the scope of this book. Well, I mean, I guess they were, but I mean, it doesn't mean there's not useful information in the book. So, you know, but you got to yeah. step out. You got to be willing to, to take some of this. Stuff. Every, every author, everybody who, who puts themselves out there gets that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, there are people who just, you know, refuse to see the value in something. I mean, my personal philosophy is, you know, if I read something and I just get one piece of really useful stuff out of it, you know, that's that's good. I, I like to focus on the on the stuff I get out, not the fact that perhaps I read some of that before in a different book, right. or maybe I'm not going to implement. You know, uh, I think if you want to have a successful life, you got to have a success mindset. And I think uh, <laughs> picking picking Absolutely. up what to, you know, like is is not the way to do that. Um, yeah. So well, great testimonial, and uh, yeah, I, I had I was lucky enough to interview Jack. Uh, recently, because it was the 10th anniversary of uh, the Success Principles, sure, it was, uh, sure. a couple of days after that had launched, and uh, so it was. It was very cool talking to him and hearing about just the, the the number of people he's reached with that book. And but you know, we all start somewhere, so all of us can be can be doing that. Everybody listening to this has got an interest in publishing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, and whether you help people by sharing your knowledge on how to do something or interviewing experts and sharing that knowledge, synthesizing that knowledge, or whether you're a fiction author and it's entertainment sure. that you provide for people. Um, and, you know, have a way, you know, we talked about this on some some previous sessions, but, you know, have a way for people to build that list and for people to communicate with you and build that sense of community because that's um, whether you're building a back-end business or whether you are using that as a way to, you know, promote your subsequent books. It's right. really powerful and it's nice to get that, you know, and accept that doesn't matter what you do, you won't please everybody. You know, there are always going to be people who send you nasty emails and stuff like yeah, that. It's absolutely. Just, well, a friend of mine, a, a, a <laughs> Scottish friend of mine, uh, Alan Cosgrove, told me one time, he said, uh, you know, the more, the higher you climb the flagpole, the more your ass hangs out. And that's, that's yeah. what happens. I mean, it's truly, really, it's just the way it goes. And, and something you said, I, you probably know the story, you might have already talked about it, but have you, have you discussed on this series the, the story of that book, The Fault in Our Stars? Have you, have you talked about the story of success for that? Have you heard it or no? Mm, uh, no. So, share that with us please yeah so it's really cool well these uh, this is the best i know it google it and find it and make sure everything i'm telling you is accurate but it's something close to this basically these two brothers uh were uh wanted to communicate some more they're living in different cities and one of them at least one of them was a writer he's a guy who wrote the fault in our stars and so he started they started hosting these like uh youtube chats basically where they would they would talk about things and interesting things and and kind of um 
and, and share them with the world. And they started to get just a ton of people who really started resonating with what they were talking about. And they became really loyal fans of like this YouTube chats they would have. And, and so long story short, when the, the fault in our stars was released, it was like, they sold like millions of copies right off the bat because of how many people mm. had come across and become connected with the, the author in these, in these informal chats with his brother. And so it's just, as you're kind of talking about you're getting out there and sharing yeah. and connecting, they were doing it in a unique technological experiment, they called it, but it ended up selling mm -hmm. millions of books leading to the movie, having blockbuster success because of the fact that they were willing to connect. And it, yeah, that's entertainment, but you know what? I, I mean, I haven't read that book, but I, I kind of know the premise of it, but I'm, I'm sure that that has been a very therapeutic book for many people going through different life situations. Yeah. Uh, the sooner you start building that following and building those relationships, the better, because when you do bring that book out, you've got that platform at least partly built. And, uh, you know, you carry on building it after and marketing after you publish the book, of course. But uh, so, you know, I wasn't going to, I just thought I'd, I'd draw that out because uh, sure. it's, um, it's a good illustration. Okay. So I'm just mindful of time here because I've got loads, loads of cool things we can talk about, but um, let's, let's dig into the celebrity branding thing or really the cracking the celebrity code and could you take us through some of the practical steps to you know what it is that uh, that you do with people to to make that happen sure i'll start with kind of two philosophies i think people need to understand and then we'll go into some practical stuff so um sure. the, the two main philosophies i want to make sure people understand and there's the, the one the first one i call the business trifecta and there's this trifecta there's really three things you have to have in your business to make it run uh, correctly. And I kind of give the illustration. When I turned 16, I bought my first car and it was a Daihatsu charade. It was a hatchback, beautiful little piece of junk. And uh, when I actually <laughs> used to have to get on the interstate and the highway here, I used to have to turn the air conditioning off because it wouldn't go fast enough. And I live in Florida, so it's hot. You know, my dates didn't particularly like that function of my car. And uh, you know, it, it was one time, the car actually had three cylinders. I didn't know that this was even possible that a car could have three cylinders. That's more like a golf cart or something. But anyway, so one time I was getting the oil changed or something, and uh, the mechanic says, hey, Nick, did you realize that your car is only running on two cylinders? I was like, no, I had no idea. And so he said, you know, here's the amount, pay me, fix it. And uh, he fixed it, and I had all three cylinders now, and I could get on the interstate without – turning my air conditioner off. My dates were much happier. Life was good. And so, you know, I use that illustration because the business trifecta is really the three cylinders I, that every business runs on. And those three cylinders are simple. They're media, marketing, and PR. The problem is most businesses are operating like my car was on two of those, or even more likely one. And so let's break down what media, marketing, and PR are. I'll go with media and PR first because they seem to be the ones that people oftentimes will um, pay someone just to do for them and they expect huge growth in their business. And they kind of punt on the marketing, just expecting the marketing to be a part of that. So media mm -hmm. is simply any medium for telling your story. So that can be anything from websites or books or eBooks, PDFs, special reports, CDs, podcasts, DVDs, internet videos, sales letters. You get the point. Any medium for telling your story. So that's, that's what media is. PR is validation of your story, validation of who you say you are. So third parties, it could be uh, a quote of the New York Times that mentions you and says something great about you, or it could be anything that validates who you are. A lot of the strategies we use for our clients are online press releases because I can put out an online press release for a client. I can write it. They can approve it, but it's all in the third person. And when someone finds that yeah. press release on Google or somewhere else, it it's like a testimonial because it's not – written in the first person by the person who it's about. So it must be credible. That's just the way we think about things. So, so mm -hmm. PR is really good for validating who you say you are. Then marketing is this third and final piece to it. And marketing is really what drives revenue. I mean, it's the only thing that really drives revenue. You can get all the media and PR you want in the world and it's most likely not going to increase your revenue. I mean, I know people who've been on 
the Good Morning Americas, the Oprahs, and they, they sold a handful of their books or product or whatever, and then it just was gone. I mean, once you're on, if you're on Good Morning America this morning, I missed it. Mm -hmm. You probably missed it. Lots of people all around the world missed it. And that episode yeah. is never going to air again, right? So that's, uh, can you hear me okay? I think we're chopping up a little bit. I didn't hear you there, sorry. I'm losing you. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm just going to let it buffer here for a second. Let's try this. Hang on. I try to reset my connection. Is that any better? I can hear you fine, Nick. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. I, I, I can lost you. Okay. I lost you totally. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so that's, I just want to lose that point. So yeah, the, the business trifecta, you got to have media marketing and PR. And then to take that one step further is a second concept. Uh, I call it the secret formula for media success. And so, uh, there's two types of media. There's mass media, television, radio, newspaper, magazines, all the things you grew up on, the brands we trust, the NBCs, the ABCs, the Forbes magazines, all that stuff. And, and that mass media is great for two things, credibility and awareness, neither of which drive revenue. They're just two things that you should have as part of your formula, but they, they don't ultimately get money in your pocket. And you know, I give the example all the time that the very first big publication I was quoted in was the New York Times. And I was quoted in this article and I told my friends about it, I told my family about it, I told my mom about it and my wife about it. And then the day it came out, you know, I had this quote in the New York Times and it was cool. And my friends and family, my mom and my wife and everyone's proud of me and said great stuff. But I expected like some influx of calls or emails or something to happen. And I got, I literally got one email from someone I didn't know mentioning that article. And it was a guy who owns a business called That's Great News. And he trolls newspapers and sells you framed copies of you in the newspaper you're quoted in. Now, brilliant business model. Yeah. And, and I bought the frame, thankfully. And the reason why I say thankfully is because it's now on my office wall, along with all the other media I have. And if it wasn't on my office wall, no one would ever know I was in it because I would have no proof mm -hmm. it would be in the recycling bin that next day. So, so media is awesome for credibility and awareness. But the second piece of that is direct media. Direct media is any type of media you create and send to an audience that actually cares. It's actually a form of direct marketing, but it's, you know, it's all the things we talked about before, the internet videos, the uh, podcast, the postcards, the DVDs, the CDs, the sales letters, the websites, the emails, and you're creating your own media and sending it to an audience who cares and you can actually make an offer. And really, again, this is direct marketing. The problem with direct media and direct marketing is it inherently lacks credibility. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. The secret formula yeah. for media success is taking mass media credentials and credibility and then inserting them in your direct media. So the next time you send out an email or you send out a postcard or a sales letter or whatever, and someone see, or someone sees a flyer for an event or the self publishing summit or whatever. And you say, Hey, you know, hi, I'm Nick Nancy. You might've recently read one of my 36 best selling books. You might've recently seen me on NBC, CBS, ABC and Fox. You might've recently seen one of my three Emmy award winning movies. You might, I mean, you get the point. People are like, mm. have I been in a coma? I don't know who this guy is, but I should be paying attention. <laughs> so the yeah, point is even when you, you use should, that, yeah. when you use that credibility, you, you should try to get mass media credentials and credibility the fastest, easiest, most inexpensive way you can, which is what I feel like we do for our clients. But then also use that in your direct media, in your direct marketing, because without that final mile, that direct marketing, the revenue is just not going to come. And, and most people sadly spend all their money on media, whether that's business cards and brochures and flyers, and they all sit in their office, they don't do anything with them. And they're wondering why this beautiful thing I created and printed isn't bring me any business or they get on TV or in quoted a newspaper, or they spend a bunch of money on PR. And they, at the end of the day, they're just perplexed on why it's not growing their business. Well, it's because they're not using that stuff in their marketing and marketing ultimately drives revenue. But with the insertion of credibility and credentials from media and PR, into your marketing, that's that secret formula, that's that little X, where those cross, that's where you get the most bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a really important distinction, I think. Uh, and easy, yeah, it sounds simple, but easy to miss that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it really moves the needle. A, a good friend of mine says, uh, everything equal, 
everything easy to do is equally easy not to do. And I, I feel mm. like this is totally, that's a revolutionary thought when you think about it, because yeah, it's stuff doesn't work when, you know, I know people who buy information products all the time and complain they don't work. Well, cause you didn't do it. It's probably because you read <laughs> it. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've heard of that. I've already heard that. I don't need to hear that. Well, did you do it? That's, I mean, that and mm. to our point earlier. And then, um, if you can you hear me okay, I'll go into some tactical now if you'd like. Yes. Cool. So, um, tactically, there's kind of three pillars that I think you should focus on when trying to use you know these concepts in your business. And the first pillar is positioning. And so you. All the stuff we just talked about, I mean, you have to position yourself as different than everybody else in the marketplace. And the beauty of that is what the world really wants is you. They want to know who you are, where you came from, what makes you different. Did you eat radioactive cornflakes? Mm. I mean, what is it that, where'd you come from? You know, uh, someone was just telling me at lunch, I guess it's a Mr. Rogers quote that, you know, uh, when you hear someone's story, they ultimately become lovable. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to become lovable. We want to become their friend in the business. So you got to position yourself as way different than everybody else. And, and certainly, um, you know, your story is the most effective way to do that because it's the only thing that you have that competitors cannot find some way to replicate. It's your story. No one else has the same yeah. story. And it's one of the things that you don't think are important are often the most important. Um, like attracts like. If people, if you put in, in your origin story and your talks and your brochures and your websites, uh, what I call personal hooks, you know, your hobbies, your family, the things you like to do, um, mm -hmm. if you go to church or whatever, whatever you do, um, the people who are most likely to connect with you are the ones who, you know, if you talk about your family or you talk about a certain place you like to go and they like that place and everything that they do that's like you, it's one more step up the ladder of trust for them because we trust people who are like us. There's no real good reason yeah. for it. It's like, Oh, I'm a good person. Well, if he, if he's like me, he must be a good person too. Cause we like the same thing. So position yourself as different than everybody else. I mean, so just as an example of us, we aren't, I mean, there are people who do the types of things we do, but no one is positioned the same way. I don't know anywhere you can go and get all the things that we do, but there are people who can get you on TV or get you in magazines and newspapers. There are marketing firms. There are, but there's no, there's no way you can go to find a firm that specializes in personal branding that's run by, you know, four partners that have been in the business for years, three Emmys, multiple best-selling books, have worked with the top celebrity experts in the world. I mean, on and on. That, that's a unique position that no one else has. And so that's the positioning is what allows us to do what we do. So that's pillar one is positioning. The second pillar is credibility. Once you decide the story you're going to tell, of course, you know, I don't tell my life story from soup to nuts. There's, you know, there's pain and heartache and all sorts of fun stuff we all went through and relationships and also that we don't always reveal. Sometimes those are very relevant, by the way. But, you know, I don't tell everyone who my kindergarten teacher was and what she taught me. But if that's relevant, you tell it. So when you figure out the sides of the story you're going to tell, the high points and the low points and the the arc of the story that gets you to the point you are now, you know, you got to make sure you have credibility that shows that you are who you say you are. It's again, we talked a little bit about it earlier. You want those media appearances and credentials and those best selling books and all those things that give you the ultimate amount of credibility. I call it the ladder of credibility. Everything you do that gives you more credibility, like write a book and become a bestseller. And if you have a blog or whatever it is, it, it you get another rung on the ladder. And when you get enough rungs on the ladder, like you said, I mean, my bio is long somewhat intentionally because it's every one of those things is a rung on the ladder of credibility and practically no one can compete. So when people look around for a personal branding expert and an agency and you know, really what they do is they see me on top of the ladder because I got more rungs on the ladder than anybody else. So the, all they can see is me and I can see around myself because I've climbed this ladder and I can kind of see what's going on in the marketplace. And so, you know, you want to build credibility uh, in order to, in order so people, you're the only one people want to work with. So you got this positioning that's unique and now you got this credibility that, man, I got to work with that person. So that's the first two. Mm -hmm. And then the third pillar is community. And, and ultimately it's a very simple concept. The more you build up a community of people, whether that's through free tools like your blog and your email list, the more you teach, the more you pour out like a thing like this, this is free. We're just teaching. The more you do this, the more you pour out knowledge and expertise, the more people are going to gather around you and say, that person has valuable things to offer. They're sharing a lot. 
you know, they have might have books in the marketplace, might have whatever. But the more you pour into people, the more that they will be attracted to you, and the more they will support you financially. They'll buy your stuff because you know, if I give you all this great free information, imagine what you get if you paid me something. You know, that's how people think. And then exactly. obviously, you know, we have good quality products and services. And if I've nurtured you and taught you things, I've taught you things you didn't know you didn't know. Well, now I'm the most trusted person you know in that marketplace. You're going to buy my mm -hmm. stuff. So support you financially. And then also, when people do try to tear you down in the marketplace or whatever, start up something because they're just grumpy or they're just negative people, the people who you've nurtured in that community are the ones who are going to come to your defense before you even have to start coming to your own defense. They'll take care of They'll eat them up, man, because you've been loyal to them. They're going to be loyal to you. And, and that's, again, in the terms of, of you know, uh, protecting you and also monetarily. They're, those are the people who you've poured into the most. Some percentage of those are going to pay you the most money. Yeah, I, I, that's great. I, I love the idea of community building being one of the three uh, key pillars there. And uh, yeah, very much. And, and just touching back to something we were talking about earlier, which is that, you know, there's always going to be somebody t taking a pot shot at you. But it's my experience that for every person that's doing that, there, there will be 10 other people giving you positive feedback. It's just that we tend as human beings, we tend to focus on the, the, the negative things. Um, so great building that community uh, and getting the support and, and not just validation, but also like, uh, I mean, I had first day of the summit, I had all sorts of tech problems and I had a couple of unpleasant emails, but the vast majority of, because I emailed out and said, look, this is what happened. So sorry, the, the first, uh, <laughs> the very first um, presentation didn't go out, it's supposed to be live, but the vast majority of people and I was really kind of surprised but touched uh, the number of people that emailed in and and uh, said you know you know this stuff happens we understand you're doing a great job and blah 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 and I mean would you also say Nick I mean again this is sort of my experience but if you build that community and not only does it does it help with you know people know liking and, and trusting you but people people want to be part of a community so it, it makes all of your marketing more powerful because not only are you offering your insights, your products, your services, but you're offering the chance of, for people to, to be part of something that's bigger than just you or just them. Absolutely. I mean, we are wired to want to be part of communities. That's just the way it is. So yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, delivering happiness, right? Uh, the, the book by Tony Shea, the CEO mm -hmm. of Zappos. I mean, the, the number one key to happiness, as it turns out, is uh, feeling like you're part of something bigger. I mean, that's, that's really, and yeah. so community, being in community is one of those things. Yeah, good. And um, just switch back. So, I mean, great stuff there. So we got we got the the philosophy, we got the business trifecta. You mentioned the secret formula for media success, and then those three pillars: so positioning, credibility, and community. I've been taking lots of notes here, as you can see. Um, and um, you know, you've, you've one of the things you do with your clients, and we should talk about this a little bit, just because of the, the uh, self publishing summit, is you help people get books out or be part of a book with a, a number of authors. And uh, so can you talk to us a little bit about that and maybe talk about, because you've got a lot of experience of this, you know, the, the, the pros and cons of being part of a multi-author book versus, uh, you know, a, a single author book, which is just you or, or maybe you and a co-author or something like that. Yeah, sure. So I've had, yeah, I've had, so I, I think I, at last count, um, I think I have 42 best-selling books that are co-authored. Okay, so, so my intro is a little bit out of date. Well, and, and I, I just got a new number like yesterday. I, I don't even know. It's somewhere around 44 books. Two of them I've written, just me and my partner, and then 42 of them in collaboration. So I can tell you the pros and cons of both. I mean, yeah. the, the pro of a collaborative book is it's so easy. Especially, I mean, you know, we make it easy for our clients. We just need one chapter. We often will pair you up with you know, a bunch of experts from around the world and a, a kind of a lead famous author, or a Brian Tracy or a Jack Canfield or whatever. And so obviously for a for a credibility push when you're trying to do business with somebody, when you say, hey, you know, I was selected as one of the top experts in the world to co-author this book with Jack Canfield. I paperclipped my chapter for you. Here's a copy of the book. I've autographed it. I've mailed it to you, whatever, and I paperclipped my chapters because we're talking about doing business together. You know, read my chapter first. But if you get a chance, certainly read Jack's chapter and then find whatever else you like in there. I mean, there's a there's an air of credibility about that and the fact that, you know, when I've got 30 or 40 or 50, I've had up to 70 people in one book before. I mean, it's much the community of people promoting it creates success on its own. And then, yes, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and then the 
obviously the it's much less expensive to do all these things when you got a bunch of people contributing, you know, not only time and resources, but also they're all paying for the publishing and the, the hardcover books and the design and all that stuff. Right. So, mm. so, uh, collaborative books are great for if you can get in a book like one of ours with a you know, with a celebrity and it, it really helps because you're probably not going to be able to get Jack Canfield to co-author a book just with you. It's just you don't have time or you don't have the budget or whatever it might be. So really good for that. And then really good for getting your foot in the door anywhere. And they're super easy, very low time uh, and much less expensive than doing your own book if you're going to go. And you know, there's very many different ways to publish. Certainly starting with self-publishing a PDF on your website to Kindle and everything else. But you know, if you're going to go with a book that has the most amount of credibility, whether you self-publish or not, it needs to be a hardcover physical book that you can use you know, in, in your marketing efforts and your sales efforts. Nothing wrong yeah. with just Kindle stuff, PDFs. We use that stuff all the time. But when you're really going for mm. the ultimate credibility, that's you need that New York Times looking and feeling book, right? Yeah, um, I, I think you need, it's really important to have, have both, isn't it? Sometimes it's going to work electronically. Kindle gets you, Amazon gets you to a, a really wide audience potentially, sure. but there's nothing like holding a book in your hand or being able to mail it to somebody or give it to somebody in person at an, an event or something. Precisely. Now let's talk about individual books. So, I mean, I really built my entire career, even up to, you know, had I not written a single other book, I'd probably still be doing this interview with you. And my first book came out, I think in 08 or 09, Somebody Branding You. And I've built my entire speaking career and everything off the back of that book. Now I've obviously done more and more and more things I've been able to accomplish over time that I think has helped my credibility and helped me get in other stages and stuff. But having your own book allows you to own a philosophy. Even if other people, I mean, there's a bunch of people out there who blog about personal branding and uh, even some people probably consult on it or design firms or whatever. But everyone knows me as the mm. celebrity branding guy because I wrote the book on it. I mean, literally, that's that's how they know me. And so, you know, um, you if you take a term like that and you write a book on it, the, the sphere of influence you want to have your audience, they just, you own that territory. It's just what it is. They just assume that. And then obviously you have yeah. more space in an individual book to lay out a philosophy. You can teach more, you can pour into people more so they understand your expertise even more. And then, you know, like uh, our, our latest book story selling, I mean, that one came out as a second book we wrote just the two of us and again it allowed us to go through a whole philosophy of how you sell by telling your story your brand story and how to sell without selling and the hollywood secrets how they do it and how you can do it in your own business and the psychology and the brain mm -hmm. science of it all and everything and you know that to this day nothing gets me bigger speaking engagements if you want to speak having your own hardcover big book, New York Times or Wall Street Journal bestseller or whatever is still the way to do it. I mean, all the speakers bureaus, they basically comb that list and they start <laughs> asking, they start calling you and asking, you know, because when they go to sell what they're selling, which is speakers to major corporations or whatever it might be, I mean, they want, they need to have a case for why they're going to bring you. So in my case, yeah. he's a teaching story selling secrets that Hollywood uses. He's a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's written 44 bestselling books. He's a three-time Emmy winner. So he understands. So they've got a case to, to tell. And he wrote this book, Story Selling. And so they can read the book to understand my philosophy or whatever. And, and anytime someone reads your book, especially if you've worked hard on it and kind of revealed a lot and poured a lot into it, people get to spend five or six hours they feel like personally with you and you only mm -hmm. have to do the work once and they, and it, it just keeps working for you. And, you know, they keep feeling like it's a personal one-to-one -one conversation and really you wrote it as a one-to-one -one, one time and you, now you're having a million one-to-one yeah. -one conversations with people or a thousand or a hundred or whatever it is. So yeah. uh, your own book is really valuable. And we're now to the stage we are trying to write, a book every year, a book every two years, just the two of us. We have a new one we're working on now called Mission Driven. It's all about how, you know, uh, tying yourself, your business to a mission, whether that's a business mission or a nonprofit mission, um, you know, really uh, increases price elasticity. You can charge more. Customers are happier to pay more. Employees are happier to stay longer because it doesn't seem like it's just about you or just about the money or just about your business. It is, you know, uh, for example, Tom shoes is all about giving back and sustainability and creating, you know, better life for people through giving away shoes when you buy a pair of shoes. And then you got Zappos whose mission is just to be the best shoe store online ever. And those are both missions. Yeah. And so if you, you get involved with the mission more and you worry less about the, the details. Right. And so we're working on a book yeah. that has all the research and then the anecdotal stuff about being mission driven. And then I believe that will lead me to a whole other, 
um, opportunity to speak. I mean, I'm speaking at, you know, if you've heard of Vern Harnish, who wrote Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, he's got the new book, Scaling Up. I'm speaking at Vern's Fortune Summit next month uh, because of my book, Story Selling, because he was looking for someone to talk about this stuff. And he, we were at an event together. He got a copy of my book. He read my book and said, Nick, I, can you speak? And so now I've got this audience of a thousand or whatever that I'm speaking to. Be, and it would not have happened without that book. It's single-handedly because of that book. Yeah. I mean, some great points there. You know, you write the book once. There's tremendous power, tremendous leverage in that. And, and as you say, you know, you spend, effectively you're spending several hours, uh, you know, you think about all the commercials, the adverts that, that we see, uh, you know, whether it's uh, on a magazine or on the TV or on a newspaper uh, or when we're browsing online. And we have that, you know, we call, call it banner blindness. We just kind of go straight past most of them. Whereas if somebody's reading your book and uh, discovering you as an expert in the, whatever they happen to be interested in at that, that point in time, um, you cut through all of that. It's, it's, it's really profound, really powerful. And, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, get, getting booked to speak just now as a, on the back of the book. And, you know, I've said this before, but it's like a book opens doors for you that you didn't even know were there, which is which no. is also really fantastic. You, you, you just don't know where it's going to take you. It, it's, it's quite special, I think. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Another friend of mine says, a book, a book can take you places you can never take yourself. And it's so true. Mm. Yeah. So... You've given us lots and lots of great stuff there, Nick. Um, before we start to to wrap things up, and obviously, uh, you know, we want to make sure that people have a way of not just getting your books, but uh, following up with you if they want to work with you and all of that sort of great stuff. Um, but is there anything that, um, that that you want to just mention or that we should touch upon that that I haven't asked you about yet? Uh, I mean, no, I think we've covered the covered the main details of the things that I think are really important to focus on. I mean, I think if you were to focus on just the things we talked about on this, you know, on this broadcast for a, a few months, I've spent the, the better part of the last 10 years focusing on these things. And there's still things I've got to work on, but it, absolutely. Those things will absolutely help you grow a business. I mean, they're tried and true principles that if that's what you want to do, grow a business, whether it's a fiction author or a nonfiction author, a speaker, all of these concepts will work very well for you. Hmm. I, I, and that's another important thing to, to note, isn't it? You know, these are, you know, timeless principles as opposed to, and, and there's nothing wrong with having, uh, having good uh, marketing tactics and, you know, knowing the latest social media trend or whatever that may sure. be. That's, that's has its place as well. And that's also important, but, but I think getting those fundamentals and, and knowing how they work and how that ties in with human psychology. And, you know, we touched on some things like that, people liking people that are like them and, and things like that. You know, right. I'm sure you read Sheldina's book influence, which, uh, which is a fantastic book. So, you know, r really good stuff there. So, Nick, tell us uh, again. Give us, give us the the names of your key books, and you know how people can uh, follow up with you, find out more about your stuff, work with you if they if they want to do that as well, because you got a lot of stuff that you can offer people. Sure. Well, thanks. So, I mean, our two main books that we have out in the marketplace are Celebrity Branding You and Story Selling. Excuse me. So, Celebrity Branding You and Story Selling, and the. Uh, those are both available anywhere. Uh, for anyone listening to this podcast or this broadcast, um, whenever you're listening, uh, because they're a listener here, if they want to email uh, info at celebritybrandingagency.com, info at celebritybrandingagency.com, just say, Nick said I was on a self-publishing summit, and he you'd send, email me a free copy of Story Selling. We'll be glad to do that for you. I'll give you a free copy of that. And then also you can go to celebritybrandingagency.com. You can opt in for uh, you know all of our newsletters and all of our – educational stuff and uh you know any of those email addresses you can reach me and we'd be happy to work with you um, we love helping people grow their businesses fantastic and yeah thanks for uh, thanks for making that offer there uh, and i mean I've, I've read that book and uh definitely recommend you take up take nick up on that offer and grab a copy of that book and read it so nick i just want to say a, a big thank you you know we, we, we've spoken before uh but it's great talking to you again and uh, well, two thank yous. First of all, for being on the summit in the first place. Really appreciate that. And thank you for taking us through that, uh, you're giving us the insights and giving us that great framework uh, for, you know, cracking the celebrity code. So big thank you, uh, Nick. My Been pleasure. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, Nick. Well, thanks a lot and uh, cheers for now. Bye-bye. Take care.